great question. Tell you, a Muslim or a non-Muslim? Both. A non-Muslim asks you, why do you need hadith? Uh, let's say a Christian asks you, right? When you have the Quran, we tell them so that Allah can protect us from becoming like you. Because <laughs> if we look at the Injil, as it was originally revealed to the Prophet Isa ibn Maryam, no doubt it had the haqq. But they messed it up. They changed it up. And they have big gaps from the time of Isa ibn Maryam to when they recorded. The, what we see in the New Testament today. Matthew, Luke, John, Romans, whatever, right? You have big gaps. In hadith, we check those asanib. If you have a big gap, mu'allaq, and we don't accept it. So we have a hadith to explain to us the ahkam that are in the Qur'an for us to protect our aqidah from getting corrupted like the Christians and Jews and others today. Right? If a Muslim asks you that, tell them because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an has told us, Allah, Atiyu Rasul, Tayyib. Today, obey Allah. How will you obey Allah? You as a, uh, me and you as regular Muslims today, any of you think you get wahi? Raise your hands and then we'll have some brothers talk to you outside. <laughs> Tayyib, nobody gets wahi, right? Tayyib, alhamdulillah. Didn't have to deal with that today. So the Quran is kalam Allah. To obey Allah for us today is to obey what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us in the Quran. Tayyib, atiyu rasul. Obedient to the Rasul, alayhi salatu salam. Any of you meet the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam regularly? I'm not talking about dreams, like regularly. If you do, please step outside and there's some brothers, right? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, he left his dunya. And he, from this worldly life, he left his dunya. And he, I hope everybody understands that, right? Because, for example, when uh, the Sahaba were shocked, what Abu Bakr radiyan said, whoever worships the Prophet, know that he's dead. And whoever worships Allah, know that he never dies. Right? So from this worldly life, the Prophet ﷺ is dead. But the life is a different issue. But we don't now today interact with the Prophet ﷺ like the Sahaba did. So how will we obey the Prophet ﷺ? Obedience to the ahadith of Rasulullah ﷺ. Tayyib. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Aqimu salah Establish the salah. Right? Everybody right? agree? Tayyib. If, you, if somebody doesn't believe in hadith, how will you establish salah? Any ideas? What do people say? What? I will go to the beach and look at the sunrise. Okay. Where did you get that from? If they say, I pray Dhuhr and Asr and Maghrib and Isha, four and uh, Fajr being Raka'atayn and so on. Where did you get that? Where in the Quran does it say Fajr is Raka'atayn and Arba Raka'at Dhuhr and so on? How many Ruku, how many Sujood? Yes, Ruku and Sujood in the Quran, but how many Sujood do you make? Oh, we just do it because everybody does it. What is, who, who told you to obey people and follow people? Where did you get that from? You want to follow people or you want to follow the Prophet You want to come up with your own way of ibadah in 14 and a half centuries later? Or you want to follow the way of the one the Quran was revealed to? This is why a hadith are a part of wahi. Okay? And we obey them and we follow them as we obey and follow the Quran. Sahih okay. ahadith. Any other questions? Come on, I get like 16, 17,000 questions and emails. This is your chance. <laughs> You're going to get ahead of everybody. Uh, what is a good argument you'd make for someone who'd say that as long as I'm a good person, I do not need religion in my life? <laughs> we had that today, subhanAllah. Tayyib, first thing, uh, uh, let me repeat the question. He said, uh, what is the argument you'd make against somebody who says I'm a good person, so I don't need religion in my life? Tayyib, ask them, what's a good person? What's a good person? Is somebody who massacres a, a huge population of the world, like uh, Mao or Stalin, a good person? Why not? Who said he's not a good person? He thought he was a good person, I'm sure. Like, you know, right? So engage me like they would. We'll do a role play kind of thing, right? <laughs> Tell you, I'll make it even easier. And I know you guys are like in Oregon and all that, but um, right? Is Hitler a good person? Well, why not? Who said he's not a good person? I'm sure he felt he was a good person. Millions of Germans that followed him thought he was a good person. Millions of Americans that supported him before the war actually began. There's pictures of the American Nazi party and 
apparently in your state, there are some people that still follow him, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, now, why is he not a good person? What is the definition of a good person then? Go ahead. Okay. W making donations makes you a good person. Epstein made a lot of donations. Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> heard of his name? Oh, you've heard of him. All right. Was he a good person? No? Why not? Why was Jeffrey Epstein a bad person? Hold on. Let the brother answer. Go ahead. Come on, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. Why was Jeffrey Epstein a bad person? Okay, well, what does that mean, violate others' rights, right? For example, for example, um, I uh, park in your parking spot, right? Am I a bad person now? Okay, human rights. What are human rights? That's a great question. Okay, you take a person, you put them in the death penalty. Is that a violation of their human right? I would refer to the UN Declaration. Oh, okay, okay, I got you. So now the UN is God. Right? So, so now you, do, you don't need religion. I, I know it's not yours. We're, we're, this is just like, a, I know it's not you, right? But, but this, is, this is a good point, right? Okay, the U, UN's Declaration of Human Rights is now the criteria for right and wrong. So if I don't agree with the UN, who's, who's right and wrong? Gitmo, was that not a violation of the human, right? Abu Ghraib, oh, you guys, don't, don't be scared. Relax, right? right? So does that make us Americans bad people now? Go ahead. I, I guess the, and don't, 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 don't. I, I guess the thought is, we should, if you have rational thought, if humans have rational, in a general sense, if okay. humans have rational thought, uh -huh. we should be able to collectively govern ourselves. Who said that? Like, as, 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 as I, I say, it, right? Sure, sure, but I'm saying, but that's not true. Because if you look at humanity, rational thought is different from culture to culture, from people to people. Right? What is considered rational? Do you, okay, I'll give you an example. Um, if somebody dies and I chop up their body and put it out to the vultures, would you think that's rational? I would not. You would not, right? In Mongolia, that is very rational. I was talking to a Mongolian, right? And this is a, a non-Muslim, obviously. And he said, our tradition is, if somebody dies, like if my father, he was saying himself, my father died, I chopped up his body with the meat cleaver, hardcore right and put it to the vultures and I was like how could you do that and he goes what do you mean it's very logical I was feeding the birds with my dead dad He's, he doesn't need it right? <laughs> so what is rational what is moral it becomes subjective then there is no good or bad right I mean think of it logically right there is a child and he has a severe handicap he's never going to be a functioning uh, productive member of society you could make a logical argument, you should just kill him, right? Why is that wrong? I, I don't want to make that argument, right? But why is it wrong? You have somebody very old, can't be productive anymore, hey, let's let him die. You know, doesn't help society, that's logical. You could take it to a Vulcan mindset, you could take it, I mean, right, I'm old, right? So this is why you cannot say that as humans, we don't need the guidance of religion because then morality becomes subjective. I have a video, I'm not trying to plug it here or anything, right? But it's about whether an atheist could be moral and I prove in it, inshallah, that you cannot. There is no such thing as a moral atheist, right? Because then morality is subjective. Stalin was an atheist, a communist. He killed more people than Hitler, right? In his mind, he was justified. Today, if you say he was immoral, he could judge you, and you could judge him, and everybody ends up being immoral by somebody's standard, right? You cannot just make up morality. That is why, alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah, we as Muslims do not make our own morality. We followed what has been revealed by Rabbil Alameen, Al Khaliq, the one who created us. So he tells us, subhanahu wa taala, what is right from wrong. What Allah has made haram in the Quran and upon the lisan of Mustafa alayhi salatu salam, this is wrong. Whether I like it or not. And what Allah has made halal and wajib and fard and mustahab and mubah upon in the Quran and upon the lisan of Mustafa alayhi salatu salam, this is right. right. This is morality. Other than that, 
then everybody has their own. I mean, here, uh, I'm not sure, I don't want to be you know, offensive here, but I believe you can smoke meth and stuff legally and all that, right? Is that morally okay? Well, go talk to the people in Texas, they'll tell you, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, you know. LGBTQ, XY, whatever lifestyle, is that morally okay? Well, I mean, it wasn't a few years ago, but apparently, you know, morality changed in America, right? So then what is moral? Then those Americans from the 50s, imagine, I'm going to end with this, inshallah, but imagine the founding fathers of America, right? George Washington, right? You, you, you know who George Washington is? If you don't, open the money in your wallet and you'll see, right? Right? He was a slave owner, right? Was he a bad, was he an immoral person? Right? Go ask average Americans here, do you think George Washington was an immoral person? They would say, no, father of our nation, Mount Rushmore, check your money, slave owner. Right? If George Washington saw you guys in Oregon today, <laughs> right, he might not feel you guys are, I mean, not you guys, but as a state, you guys are very moral. Right? He might see the LGBTQ lifestyle. He might see racial integration and be like, bah, I can't believe you guys hang out together. Right? <laughs> I'm going to keep this G-rated. <laughs> right? But I'm saying, is then, then, then who's moral? This is why we have to explain to Kufar, morality is what our creator has shown us. Go ahead, Hamza. Um, so, about the uh, subjectiveness of morality, uh, how would you, uh, what do you think about the, uh, about the pre-notions of the atheistic community when they say who are um, trying to justify nihilism about they say oh well we can make up our own okay. kind of like what Friedrich Nietzsche said right. we can make our own make believe excellent we can make our own rea reality right and so they say that this could be better than religion it's making up our own reality like distracting ourselves from nihilism Sure. So, so the same thing, I mean, think of this, right? If you can make a better reality than what the religious guidelines give you, right? What would that be? Right? Everybody has their own, for example, the death penalty. I, like, don't debate with atheists on just on a philosophical field. They go practical, right? Tell them, okay, in your better moral code, would the death penalty be legal? Like, would it be moral, right? If they say yes, tell them how come you need a great number of people do not consider it. You go to Europe, you go to many countries, they don't have the death penalty. Many states in the U.S. don't have it. They consider it immoral, right? And if they say it would be moral, then tell them, and you go look at the other states that, that do not, right? And if they say it's immoral, tell them go to Texas, talk to them. They fry people up all the time, right? <laughs> so here, which one is moral? Right? Abortion, is it moral or not? Right? We as humans don't agree. We see a, a contention within our country here in America. Right? A very bitter contention on these issues. Which tells you we do not have a standard uh, understanding of morality as, as, as a community, as a society, as humans. We can never. Because everybody has their own mindset. Now what's better? Any of you have a phone? A cell phone? Uh, all you guys got cell phones, right? If you have a Samsung or an Apple or I don't know if Nokia is still around, I don't know. Right? Blackberry. Blackberry, are they still around? Wow, oh, okay. Motorola, Motorola? whoa, going way back. Um, any one of those phones, when it was released, when it was dropped, when it was a new technology was taken, who knew best how to operate? You? Or the company that made it right when you got your first smartphone whenever that may be and hope you all have smartphones right? um, you had no idea how to use it like when I got my first smartphone I had no idea so I looked at the instructions I talked to people how do you use it like can I put it in a microwave can I go skydiving with it can I go water diving with it can I right and and as the manufacturer gave you okay you know take it in this much moisture and not then you used it that way and if you didn't 
Then you had a broken iPhone because it came close to water. Like back in the iPhone 4 and 5 days, like you just got to get close to water. It wouldn't work. They wouldn't even take it back anywhere. They'd be like, no, water damage, right? So the creator knew best. So the same thing is true with us. If you use it not the way the manufacturer sold you to use it, then you had a broken phone. When we live in a way un which is not in line with what our creator, our manufacturer, our Allah has told us, we have a broken society. And when we live in accordance to the Quran, was sunnah, to the way of Allah and the Prophet والسلام, you have a beautifully functioning society. The problem is we don't implement it in our countries, in our communities, in our cultures. Even most of our masajids are not run according to the Sharia. This masjid is, inshallah. I'm not saying here. I'm not going to offend anybody here. But most of the masajids in America, they run through boards and elections and, and, and campaigning and things. Where did you guys get this? The imam's a servant. And the imams are like, jump, how high? <laughs> not me, though. <laughs> My masjid doesn't pay me, so they can't tell me nothing. <laughs> you don't pay me either. So. <laughs> so an imam is supposed to lead. Right? I'm off topic now. All right, tell you. Questions, Fadl, Habibi. Here, and then we'll go to the back after that. How do you respond to our disbelievers regarding infirm possibility of music in Islam? Oh, man, a disbeliever. So, uh, it's a very good question, actually. How do you respond to a kafir, a disbeliever, about why music is haram? The first thing, if I get that question, is I would not address the issue of music. I would take it back to Tawheed. Oh, so okay, first, is there a creator, right? Is, is there, do you believe that there is a creator? I would discuss that first. If a disbeliever asks me about why do you pray, I don't get into, oh, the, you know, health benefits, why do you fast? I want to take it back, if I can, in a conversation. If it's a very short, like a question answer university, it's different, but I will take it back to whether you believe there is Allah. And if you don't, let's talk about that first. If you believe Jesus or, you know, Matma, Rama, Gangudi, Gagandi, whatever is God, then let's clear that mess up first. And then when you believe there is Allah, then I will tell you that Allah ordained this in the Quran. The Prophet ﷺ explained this in the Sahih Hadith. That's why it's haram. Right? Now we can get into some of the hikmah of the effects of music on the human and there are scientific studies done about how emotions are controlled. There are, you know, if you look at most uh, sports events, things, they, they study music and how to affect the people's mood and all of that. But, but that's not where I would take it. Because if Allah made it halal, it would be halal. And if Allah made it haram, it's haram. We aslama, submit. Faddalu shaykhuna. عني ولو آية وكيف تفحمون أنا أقول أن يدرس البخاري المسلم قبل الدعوة هذا خطأ في فهمكم طيب لكن في كلامي أنا قلت لكم حتى إذا تعرف الآية من القرآن والآية من آيات الله سبحانه وتعالى حتى لا إله إلا الله عدها وتكلم مع الناس لكن لا تتكلم هذا ما, ما عندكم علم فهم إن شاء الله أنا أترجم في اللغة الإنجليزية أيضا إن شاء الله لنستفيد الناس so the brother he said that uh, maybe some people understood from my talk that you have to do, study Bukhari and Muslim and Fiqh and all of that before you give da'wah. But in the talk, I said, Tufail ibn Amr ibn Dawsi, he just knew La ilaha Allah and Rasulullah told him to go back and talk to the people and give them da'wah. So I said that if they understood that, then they misunderstood what I said because I said in my talk that Rasulullah sallallahu said, Ballighu, convey upon my behalf, Anni, walaw aya, even if it's one ayah. But the issue we want to clarify is if you know an ayah, don't talk about other than it. Don't go outside of what you know. If you know one ayah, go call to people towards that one ayah. And I think I was very explicit in this, right? But don't speak about what you don't know about. If you know one ayah, لا تتكلم على الفقه. إذا أنت لا تدري في أحكام الشريعة, لا تتكلم على أحكام الشريعة. 
تكلم على الوحدة الوحدة الله سبحانه وتعالى التوحيد الحمد لله يعني هذا هو يعني التكليف علينا إن شاء الله if you know one thing don't speak about what you don't know about stay within the bounds of your knowledge but every one of us has the obligation to call towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala طيب إن شاء الله one more question or طيب two more questions and then we're going to end for salah إن شاء الله فضل I saw you first and then we'll go over there إن شاء الله Look, no doubt that aqidah and iman and tawheed begins in the qulub and then it is explained on the lisan and it is made apparent upon the ajza on the, on the body's parts. That's true. But our responsibility is to explain to people about Allah, about tawheed, about uh, the risala of Rasulullah sallallahu about mu'ajizat al nabi alayhi salam, mu'ajizat al quran. This is our responsibility. And if their heart is not guided, this is between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is true. But are we fulfilling that responsibility today? I mean, how many kuffar live next to us in our neighborhoods that have never heard about Islam? How many people do you work with that have never heard about Islam? And then you blame Fox and Trump and this and that. But what about you? Take responsibility. What's the best marketing? Huh? Where's my marketing majors at, right? Word of mouth. Better marketing than TV and Super Bowl ads, word of mouth. So Fox and then they can do what they want. But, but our responsibility is to call people towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you've done your job, khalas. And Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave da'wah to Abu Lahab, to Abu Jahl, to Abu Talib. They didn't become Muslim. The son of Nuh alayhi salam didn't become Muslim. The wife of Lut alayhi salam, kafir. Right? Wife of Nuh alayhi salam as well. The father of Ibrahim alayhi salam and so on. Right? Hidayah is not in our hands. That's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our responsibility is to speak and then to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide them. If your da'wah is without dua, you, 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 you're, you're missing. You've got the gun with no bullet. Right? That's a figure of speech. I don't care about it. Right? Right? You have to have dua. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your da'wah. I tell you, I had that brother, I'll take you as well, even though, okay, come on guys, you guys are going to, tell you, Fadl Habibi. About the miracles of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Yes, yes. So in that, um, if you, I have a video upon the splitting of the moon and we talk about the evidence by the non-Muslims, Quraysh, Mushrikeen and their statements and I give the references in the video and we talk about NASA and that kind of stuff. So if you put Uthman ibn Farooq, moon splitting, it will give you all those evidences. Hayakumullah. Tayyib, uh, brother here, here and then we're stopping. All right, all right. Well, one more in the back too. Let me take this brother first because he was first. Fadal. Yeah, I, I have a friend that uh, was a former Christian who became a Muslim. Alhamdulillah. And uh, he, obviously, growing up for him, he always thought, you know, being in his 20s or you know, his adolescent years, you know, he'd sleep with a lot of women and things of this nature. But now he said to me, like, uh, to me, I'm not like you guys, how you guys thought. Tell him Mary two. Huh? Tell him Mary two, no, three, I, I, four. I tried, I tried, but basically, <laughs> what I what, what I gathered was like uh, he he said he asked um what is the difference between like him not committing all the zina and committing it and then asking for forgiveness even if like really hard like halal and haram. That's the difference. No, and then yeah, I know that, but um he says he he, he knows what's the, the difference. Reward of zina? No, no, no. The reward of like, because uh, Allah loves the one that asks for forgiveness because he's struggling. Sure, but, but that's somebody who falls into sin, not somebody who plans it out, right? You can't plan on sinning with the knee of tawbah. You're trying to trick Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is no tricking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? All of us fall into sin. 
وي ار اول بيبل هو ضعيف يعني خلق الانسان ضعيفا خلق الانسان ضعيفا اي مين ذير از لا تفسير ذير بت يعني وي هاف ويكنسز تو اور ديزايرز اند ثينجز بت وات يو هاف تو انديرستاند از وين يو فول انتو سين تو ميك توبه ذس از سمثينج بيلوف باي الله سبحانه وتعالى بت وين يو ميك ا نيه و سينينج ويز ذا نيه اوف توبه يو ار تراين تو بلاي تريكس ويز الله سبحانه وتعالى tell him yani of course tell him don't think you're the only one who desires for women and things like this we're all men here right uh, but if he wants to tell him get married and inshallah one wife will be enough for him tell him you you may think whatever but a good religious wife this will be enough for you but if for some reason he has a need to tell him get a second third fourth whatever but but you know this is all talk of people that are not married you know people aren't married they're like i want to get three four and then they get married they're like why did i get married <laughs> Tell you, uh, brother in the red, then we'll come, inshallah. Uh, anybody else I didn't? Okay, good. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sure. Mashallah. Sure. course tell you good question like a legal contract unis king involved here um so the question is that in the time of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying the shahada was enough uh, because at that time people were men they were rijal they were very honest and they said the shahada but actually that's not true because you had munafiqun at that time and at the time of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam you had many Uh, there were people of nifaq there were people in mecca even that took the sh- they accepted islam like utba the son of abu jahl and then he made uh, any when surah najm was revealed he made kufar of it right then you had the people in medina who were munafiqun uh, any famous well known so uh, even at that time that was there our responsibility is not to look in the hearts of people if somebody becomes a muslim we follow the same way of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam we tell them say ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu rasuluh this is it Right? Now, if their heart, they're a spy or something, خلاص, that's between them and Allah. What are they going to spy on us for? What are, right? They sit there and drink tea. <laughs> oh, oh no. He was praying. Oh. <laughs> my stuff, like, I don't worry. Like, I, there's a camera on me now, and my masjid is a camera. When I'm giving da'wah, there's a camera. Anybody can record anything I say. Alhamdulillah, if I'm not, if I'm not ashamed to say it, then uh, i'm not ashamed to stand in front of a court and if i am then i shouldn't say it right tell you father have you about who tell you tell you and the sabi'in is talking about the people who follow the zubur right and this is the tafsir of the ayah so if those who believed in that in the time of yani daud alayhi salam and so on Alhamdulillah, there were people of Iman. The people who believed in Isa ibn Maryam at their time, they believed in Allah on the day of Akhirah. The people who believed in Musa salam, and so on, whether they followed the Torah and so on, they were people of Iman. But this time is the time of an Nabi Muhammad And there are, this is why we don't just take the Quran out of context. We look, there's a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever in this time and does not bring Iman on me, then they are people of Jahannam. So today, Ali, the, the Rasul of the time. If me and you were alive in the time of Sayyidina Nuh salam, then we had to follow Surah Nuh salam. If we were in the time of Isa ibn Maryam, we would be the followers of Isa ibn Maryam, inshallah, right? But we are in the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Even those from the Sahaba that were Christians and Jews before they became Muslim, why did they become Muslim? Like some Muslims, they draw inner faith idea, oh, let them, then why did the Yehud and stuff in Medina, and why did the Sahaba who were Christians before, why did they become Muslim? Because this is the time of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Say one last one, who, who was there? Say, well, the brother from Indonesia, I'm assuming. Hayyakum Allah. What would happen to a person in the middle of nowhere? I say, well, a person lived alive in the middle of the jungle, building his death submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it's the case, then when you come to him and then tell about Islam, and it's possibly to be his death, then hmm. uh, it's better to leave him alone. Tayyib, if somebody is from Ahlul Fitra, any people who are in the middle of nowhere, people that are uh, out there, just any, they've never heard of anything, then 
even then they are they are tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do they use their aql to see the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believe in one Allah or do they start worshiping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right they will have their tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge them they could still go to Jahannam it's not like they're guaranteed because they could Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put enough in ourselves and around us for us to recognize Allah okay? and when we look at the da'wah it is our responsibility to get it to them right if they reject the da'wah then they would be people who would have rejected the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anyway and if they accept the da'wah then this is something better for them because now they will know how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained for them to live so even then we should give them da'wah but if somebody is truly in a situation they've never heard of Islam we leave their case with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's it, inshallah.